Let's look at this nice inequality problem from the 2002 Putnam exam. So we'd like to show that for all n bigger than one, we have one over two n times e is less than one over e minus one minus one over n to the n power, which in turn is less than one over n times e. Now I'd like to observe that as n approaches infinity, this one minus one over n to the n power approaches one over e. So this stuff in the middle must approach zero. But of course, that's to be expected by the squeeze theorem because everything on uh, the right and the left hand side also approaches zero. So this can kind of be seen as an argument for this object right here approaching one over e. Okay, so let's get to it. So we're gonna start by multiplying everything here by e. And in fact, I guess I should say the general strategy that we're gonna take here is to continually manipulate this into equivalent inequalities until we get one that is kind of obviously true. So our first manipulation, like I said, will be to multiply by e. That leaves us with one over two n is less than one minus e times one minus one over n to the n, which in turn is less than one over n. And then next up, we're gonna subtract one from, well, all parts of this. That, that's gonna leave us with one over two times n minus one is less than minus e, which is uh, multiplied by one minus one over n to the n, which in turn is less than one over n minus one. Okay, so now we've got something like that. But next up, I'm gonna multiply all parts of this inequality by minus one, but that's gonna switch the order. So I'll have one minus one over n on the left here, and now we'll have e times one minus one over n to the n, and then on the right, we'll have one minus one over two times n. But now everything here is positive, so I can take a logarithm. Taking a logarithm of all parts of this, we'll have the log of one minus one over n here. And then using logarithm rules, that's gonna give us one plus n times the log of one minus one over n here. And then in turn over here, we're gonna have the log of one minus one over two n. Okay, cool. And then the next step, uh, I'm going to, again, multiply by a minus one and switch the order of this inequality. Now, it seems like we shouldn't really have to do that because we just did that a couple of steps ago. But that being said, between these two steps, we took a logarithm. So these are actually two different kind of multiplications by minus one. In view of the logarithm, one is really a multiplication by minus one and one is like an inversion. So you can kind of keep that in mind. But anyway, that's gonna leave us with minus the natural log of one minus one over two n over here on the left. And then here we're gonna have minus one minus n times the natural log of one minus one over n. And then over here on the right, we have minus the natural log of one minus one over n. Okay, and then next up, we're gonna use an integral representation of this natural log. Observe that we can write this extreme left-hand part as the integral from zero to one over two times n of one over one minus x dx. So let's just look at that. If we take the antiderivative there, we get minus natural log of one minus x, and then evaluate at the endpoints, we get exactly this up here. And we're gonna do this for all parts. So here we get a minus one minus the integral from, or this should be plus because the sign changes by our previous observation. So plus the integral from zero to one over n of n over one minus x dx. And then over here we have the integral from zero to one over n of one over one minus x dx. And now what we'll do is recognize that the integrands here are summed geometric series. And so that allows us to rewrite them as, well, instead of the summed version of the geometric series, the geometric series itself. 
So here we're going to have the sum as m goes from 1 to infinity of x to the m minus 1. But then that's going to be inside of an integral from 0 to 2 times n dx. So we've got something like this. And then we've got something similar over here. So that's going to be minus 1 plus our sum from, and in this case, I'm going to do something a little different and start it at 0 and go to infinity. And then that'll be, let's see, the integral from 0 to 1 over n of n times x to the m dx. Just I've got a little bit different of an indexing here, but we have the same result. Okay. And then over here on the right, we're going to have something really similar to what we have on the extreme left-hand part, just with a different bound of integration. So here we've got the sum as m goes from 1 to infinity. The integral from 0 to 1 over n of, we need this x to the m minus 1 over here, just like we had it in the extreme left-hand side. Okay, now I'd like to do a little observation on what's going on with this middle term. So let's notice that when m is equal to 0, we end up with the, the integral from 0 to 1 over n of simply n. But that integral is pretty clearly equal to 1 because we get n times 1 over n. But notice we've got a minus 1 out front added into this. So we can actually take this minus 1 out front added into this and change this 0 to a 1 because it's like canceling out the 0th term. And now we're ready to perform all of these integrations, which are not super complicated. So here on the left-hand side, we get our sum from 1 to infinity of, I'm going to put it in the order of 1 over 2 to the m times m times n to the m. And then here in the middle, we have the sum as m goes from 1 up to infinity of, Let's see, it'll be n over m plus 1 times n to the m plus 1. But I guess before moving on, I'm going to take the opportunity to take this n in the numerator, turn it into 1, and then get rid of this plus 1. So we have n to the m there. And then over here on the extreme uh, right-hand side, we have the sum as m goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over m times n to the m. So we've got something like this. But now I'd like to observe that this final inequality we have is true because it's true in a term by term fashion. Observe that 1 over 2 to the m times m times n to the m is most definitely less than 1 over m plus 1 times n to the m. And that's because, notice that m plus 1 will be less than 2 to the m times m. Well, clearly if you multiply something by 2, you're going to get something larger than adding 1. And multiplying by 2 times m, well, it's even going to be larger. I guess maybe something is happening at the low end where we get equality for maybe small values of m perhaps, but we're summing this up, so that would quickly disappear. Okay, and then let's see. Over here, we're going to have 1 over m times n to the m. And that inequality pretty clearly holds because, well, what do we have? We have m plus 1 is bigger than m, and that's how those denominators differ. But of course, if the denominator is larger, the whole thing is smaller. Okay, so look at what we did. We took our original goal inequality, transformed it via, you know, pretty standard calculations to an equivalent inequality, which was true in a term-by-term -term fashion. But that means that our original inequality, which was our goal, is proved.